Okay, in these examples I want to talk about converting between rational exponents and radicals and in this case what we're going to do is we're just going to evaluate some uh, some numbers. So we have 25 to the 3 halves, 25 to the negative 3 halves, 64 to the negative 4 thirds, and 16 to the positive 3 fourths. The main rule again that we're going to use here, or at least one of them, it says if you have uh, uh, x raised to the n divided by m, we can write that as a radical or a root. The number on the bottom goes out front, that becomes our root, and then we stick our x underneath the radical, and then we raise all of that to the n power, which is the part on top. Okay, so let's do a few examples here. So 25 to the 3 halves, let's do that one first. So what I would do, again, just simply rewrite this. Okay, so again, the denominator becomes the root, so this is a square root. We don't always write it, but let's just emphasize it here. This is a square root cubed. And then I think, what is the square root of, po of uh, 25? And the square root of 25, remember a square root, any even powered root is always a positive number. So the square root of 25 is positive 5. And then we have to raise that to the third power. So 5 times 5 is 25, times another 5 would give us 125 as our solution. Okay, so 25 to the negative 3 halves. Again, we could write that as 25 to the negative 3 halves divided by 1. You can write anything over 1. That doesn't change its value. And now we're going to use one of our algebraic properties that says, well, if you have a negative exponent, to make it positive, you move it to the other side of the fraction. So now we'll have 25 to the 3 halves in the denominator. But we know what 25 to the 3 halves is. That's what we already figured out in part A. So in this case, we'll end up getting 1 over 125 as our solution. OK, so 64 to the negative 4 thirds. Let's just do the same thing. Um, so that would be 64 to the negative 4 thirds over 1. OK, so I can rewrite this as 1 over 64 to the positive 4 thirds. And again, now I'm going to rewrite this using my, my radical notation. So it says we write a root. It says whatever number's on the bottom, that's what, that's what our root is. So here we're going to have the third root of 64. And we're going to raise all of that to the fourth power. Okay, so, you know, just like I think, you know, in elementary school they say, hey, you have to learn your multiplication tables. I think it's definitely a good idea to know uh, some powers of numbers um, because... Otherwise, it's just hard to recognize sometimes. So in this case, I'm thinking, what number times itself three times gives me 64? And maybe you know this one off the top of your head. Maybe you don't. Um, so again, so if you think about it, um, you can always check them. 2 times 2 times 2, that's not right. 3 times 3 times 3, I don't think that's right. But 4 times 4 times 4, that will give me 64. So the third root of 64 is 4. And again, now we have to, uh, you know, we have to evaluate 4 to the 4th, so you can either always do it by hand or with a calculator. Um, I believe 4 to the 4th would be 256. So 64 to the negative 4 thirds, I think it got squeezed off there, so 64 to the negative 4 thirds would simplify down to the number 1 over 256. Okay, so Last but not least, we have 16 to the 3 fourths. Again, so this has a positive exponent, so we don't have to do this, this trick of moving it to the denominator. So again, it says this time I'm going to take the fourth root of the number 16, and then I'm going to cube that number. So I think what number, what positive number times itself four times gives us three? Well, I believe if you multiply 2 by itself 4 times we'll get 16 so the fourth root of 16 does give us 2 and then we have to take 2 to the third which will give us the value 8 
So 16 to the 3 fourths is just a fancy way to write the number 8. So, all right, um, I hope these examples make a little bit of sense. Again, you know, a lot of this comes down to, I think, arithmetic and just knowing powers. So if you've forgotten some of your exponents, uh, my advice would be just to, you know, just to think about them, maybe write down a couple, because it'll certainly expedite, I think, uh, you know, the process and, and, and certainly save you time in the long run.